Supergirl is staring down Kong. Yeah, how long is this staring contest gonna go on? Green Arrow crawls from a nearby tree. She doesn't take her eyes off the beast. As long as it takes. But you're probably wondering how we got here. Godzilla is attacking the DC Universe due to the maneuvers from the Legion of Doom and Toy Man. In our last episode, Superman was seemingly killed defending Billy Batson. So what will our heroes do now? This is Comic Storian. I take comic books, I turn them into audio drama so that you know what's going on in the world of comics and what to add to your collection. If you enjoy this type of content, consider supporting us at YouTube memberships or Patreon or check out our other channel, Comic Storian Full Stories. Now let's get into the Justice League vs. Godzilla vs. Kong issue 4. As the rest of the heroes try to repair the world after the Titans' attacks, Batman stands over the healing pod of Superman. I promise, I'll find a way to fix this. We need you. Batman whispers. Wonder Woman is by his side, putting a hand on his shoulder, telling him that there is nothing any of them could do. It happened too fast, she explains, but he shakes his head. He's not gone. Regardless of what the rest of the team tells him, they try to console him, but Batman pushes them away, storming out of the room. He needs time to process, Wonder Woman tells the others, but Batman calls them from the fortress's trophy room. The Dreamstone is missing. That's how they got here, he tells them pointing out that while the Legion of Doom came for Orion's sled in the Mother Box, the Dreamstone is also missing. After the Boom Tube was activated, the Legion were sent to an alternate world where these titanic monsters existed, Batman says. Flash nods, remembering the Legion's arrival at Black Gate Prison. Toy Man. And Batman nods. Find him, and we find the Dreamstone, and then we send the monsters back. Cyborg interrupts him, though informing the team that he has arrived where the beacon was transmitting and drawing the monsters. But it is gone. So where are the monsters? Wonder Woman questions. Cyborg informs her of the giant crab and mammoth's locations around the world. However, based on the Metropolis monster's current trajectory, it's heading our way. Cyborg informs them. The team seems confused, sensing that Godzilla could still be coming after Clark. Somehow. We have to move him somewhere that they can't get to. Batman says as he returns to Clark's chamber. Meanwhile, on Skull Island, Supergirl is staring down Kong. Yeah, how long is this staring contest gonna go on? Green Arrow calls from a nearby tree. She doesn't take her eyes off the beast. As long as it takes, she tells him. But Ollie points out that he doesn't think Kong is going to back down. So unless you can subtly learn how to speak ape, consider this mind-numbingly a waste of time, Oliver calls out. But Supergirl shakes her head, pointing out that the ape is territorial, but it isn't like the one that attacked Cal and Metropolis. Kong's eyes go wide at the mention of Godzilla, and Kara thinks that he can understand her. That's a stretch, Ollie jokes. But Supergirl turns to him and asks that since Kong isn't currently a threat, could Ollie keep an eye on the big ape? Just be careful to stay out of his way. I need to see kal -El. I will return. She says before flying away, leaving Oliver alone. He glances up at the giant ape. Hi, he says quietly. Kong glares at him and then lets out another roar, making Oliver throw up his hands to show that he isn't a threat. But he realizes that Kong is actually staring behind him. Ollie turns to see the approach of ninjas out of the trees. Oh, I see them. It's them you're growling at. Hang back, big guy. This is more of a me size problem. I'll check it out. Ollie says as he leaps down. He comes up to the forest to realize that the League of Assassin Ninjas are surrounding him. And as an assassin closes in, Oliver pulls out his bow and smiles. You waited for Supergirl to leave to act, didn't you? Doesn't matter. You're here, which means you're up to no good. Which means you're my problem, Oliver says as he leaps into the fight, ducking under the blows as he kicks and punches. He then whirls around, firing his bow again, but the assassins continue to close in on him until Kong is suddenly there, slamming his foot into the ground, causing it to shake, throwing everyone to the floor. Oliver stumbles, almost falling off the cliffside, but he manages to grab on, watching as Kong continues to swipe at the League of Assassins, throwing them away. Glancing down, Oliver sees that the League has a ship in the bay below him, so he quickly drops down and quietly lands on it. Back over at the Justice League Watchtower, Diana and Hawk Girl are watching footage of Godzilla's attack, questioning what type of energy could have hit Superman, but they're interrupted by the arrival of Hal and Lois. The team leads Lois into Superman's healing chamber. Lois leans forward, looking at the man that she loves. They said the solar array isn't healing your damaged cells. It's not going to work for me, 
She whispers, holding up the engagement ring that she found in his pocket when he went to fight the Titan. It's beautiful and my answer is yes, she says with tears in her eyes. But she tells him that he has to put the ring on her finger or she won't accept it. Hal suddenly leans into the doorway, telling her that they've received a distress call from Aquaman and they've got to go. I'm staying right here, if that's okay. Hal nods and the team heads out, now alone. Lois looks at the footage of the attack. She keeps scanning until she comes to the footage of the Legion's attack on the Fortress of Solitude. She begins to ponder to herself as she looks at Toyman holding the Dreamstone in his hands, and then she reaches for her phone to put out a call. It's Lois. Tell me every move Lex Luthor has made in the past 24 hours. I'm looking for a red stone. Meanwhile, Lex is standing in his hidden research lab. He watches as the machines continue to build the massive Titan. Look at the innovations within this otherworldly tech. They successfully recreated the mechanized titan, capable of defeating the greatest of monster threats. This will elevate my weapons beyond anything LexCorp has created. Lex tells her, but Mercy still doesn't understand why Lex is rushing the development. Because of Godzilla, king of the monsters. He's an unstoppable force whose only concern is maintaining the natural order. He can't be manipulated into destroying the Justice League. And we can't wait until these titans magically do our bidding. They need to be nudged. Meanwhile, in the deep of the ocean, Wonder Woman, Flash, and Green Lantern have responded to Aquaman's distress call. As they arrive, they are shocked to find the deep sea titan attacking Atlantis. It's way bigger than the other ones, Hal points out. Aquaman rushes to his friend's side, asking for them to keep the monster from attacking the dome of the city. Atlantis has done nothing to challenge the sea creature. I tried communicating with it, but it only responds with rage. The heroes rush forward, trying to keep the Great Titan from advancing, unsure why it's continuing to attack Atlantis. Something must be drawing it, a beacon, like the one that called them away from the cities. Hal shouts as he hits it with a blast, but as they challenge it, it breathes a cloud of ink and lightning at them. Hal rushes forward, shielding them with a green construct, but the green construct quickly begins to crack. Cyborg suddenly breaks through their comms, warning them that something is approaching the underwater city. The heroes look up as Godzilla swims towards the sea titan, hitting it with a blast of atomic breath. The heroes back away as the two monsters begin to trade blows back and forth. I think we should let them sort it out, Hal tells the others, but Aquaman shakes his head, reminding them that they can't let the monsters breach the dome. You all play goalie, I'll find the beacon, Flash tells him as he swims away. The heroes swim forward, but they are dismayed to find that the monsters have no care for what's around them, as the sea titan is throwing Godzilla into the Great Dome, cracking it. Mara swims to Arthur's side. It's time we activated the failsafe, love, she tells him, and she points out how ineffective the superheroes are against the beasts. Your friends cannot turn the tide. They are out of their element. Activate the failsafe, she says again. Arthur ponders for a moment before finally nodding his head in agreement. You're right, we have no choice. He says before quickly swimming off. He swims into the depths, far below the city of Atlantis, where he finds a great chain. Arthur doesn't hesitate, releasing the bindings on the chain, freeing its prisoner. The great kraken swims up, and the rest of the league are shocked by the arrival of a third titan. No. Arthur has released our kingdom's last line of defense, the mighty kraken. Mara tells them. Meanwhile, on the nearby Skull Island, Oliver has slipped aboard the League of Assassins ship. He avoids their patrols to find what they are smuggling away from the island, and he's shocked to find the mighty skull of a skull crawler. Issue 4 of Godzilla vs. the Justice League is complete, and if you want more Godzilla comics, let us know in the comments down below. But this particular story, it's to be continued.